Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we are going to check out the final of the Ferocious Pack figures. I didn't initially have this Velociraptor Blue, but once the official line of Dominion did start to hit stores everywhere, you know, it was pretty easy to pick up, pretty easy to find, no real difficulty there. So we now have Velociraptor Blue here to complete the line. I wasn't even sure if I would review this figure just because we've had so many Velociraptor Blues before and I didn't know if there would really be much interest in seeing this one, but since I did cover the rest of the line, I figured it makes sense to cover them all because that's usually what I try to do is be the, like the definitive channel when it comes to dinosaur releases where you can see pretty much almost everything at least that you are interested in potentially purchasing so we now have velociraptor blue here to take a look at as well you can see as far as the box art goes again your standard when it comes to dominion and then here on the back you have a look at all of the other figures that were in this line this wave of figures that we have reviewed all of already so let's pop this out of the box and check it out so here is our Velociraptor blue and I think his tail's turned. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that makes more sense. So here is our Velociraptor blue and hmm, it's an interesting one. I feel like the head sculpt is definitely not Velociraptor bluish. The head sculpt actually looks kind of weird on the figure, but uh, you know, as a whole, I mean, I guess it looks okay for the most part. Yeah, it's not too bad. I definitely don't know about this head sculpt maybe that is a velociraptor blue head sculpt looking at it on this side it kind of looks a little better i don't know for some reason when i first looked at it it looked a little weird but you know as a whole again it looks pretty okay like your standard velociraptor blue of course we do expect to get more velociraptor blue figures every time a new movie comes out that features velociraptor blue even though we've had a plethora of them already and in fact this is already like the second i think no, the third that I would have reviewed from this line because we had the mini and we also had the extreme damage version. Now we've got this version, which is the ferocious pack. The only thing I'm really picking up on straight away that is absolutely a downside on this one is the fact that the blue stripe like ends here in the hip region and that is not how it works on Velociraptor Blue. That stripe should run pretty far out onto the tail before disappearing and Mattel normally does include the stripe out onto the tail but I guess this is just a sign to show us where things are going when it comes to Mattel and their paint applications because clearly Mattel your cheapness is showing when it comes to this figure as we again have the paint cutting off really early and just dropping the figure overall when it comes to the appeal factor like I really feel like that straight away takes a lot away from this figure as a whole but I'm intrigued to check it out anyway so let's go ahead and get a closer look right now so taking a look at the head sculpt the velociraptor blue head sculpt in general looks to probably be the same head sculpt we've had prior in the Mattel line I don't really notice anything too different, though Mattel sometimes kind of alters the head sculpts and stuff, and in general the sculpts of their figures, and it's like slight alterations you almost won't even pick up on, but as a whole I feel like it looks like your standard Velociraptor head sculpt from Mattel. The only thing I really notice is like the eyebrow area seems like really high up, and I don't know if it was like that before and I didn't notice it, but I don't think that's really how Velociraptor Blue looks, like it doesn't go up that far, almost looks like he has a goonie on his head. But the paintwork looks pretty nice here in the face. You have a nice yellow eye with a black slit-like pupil. You also have the blue that runs up and over and around the eye. We also have the white outline on that blue as well. So the head sculpt, as far as the paintwork goes, does look really nice. We, of course, have the trademark gray coloration of blue. And then you also have some speckles showing up here and there. As always, you have an articulated jaw with that nice pinkish tone in there, as well as the nicely painted teeth painted with an off-white. Everything seems to have a pretty nice gloss coat. Once we come over to this side, you can see that the eye as well is painted very nicely over here, so no quality control issues on this particular figure. The blue stripe does run up and end before the eye, which again is accurate to what Velociraptor Blue looks like in the Jurassic series. And the stripe overall looks nice and natural with the way it's applied. As you move back here through the course of the neck, you see those kind of osteoderms running along the neck. Again, something that you do see on Velociraptor Blue. A lot of really nice creasing leading down the course of the neck, some wrinkling there in the throat region. As you move down into the body itself, you can see more creasing again before you reach the shoulder blade. We have some alternate coloration here with kind of like a light yellow for the underside, but it's like so abrupt. It starts here in the chest and ends in the groin area. Another instance of why would you even bother but I don't know, I'm not really sure where I uh, can go to read up on Mattel's logic, but I just can't figure it out myself. You can see as we lead down here into the arm, you have some nice muscle definition in the arm, 
really nice bend in the elbow. The elbow itself is present. And you can see some more definition as you move out here into the hands. Nicely sculpted out fingers on our Velociraptor Blue. You have some nice scoots down the fingers. The nails are sculpted, but as usual, not given paint. As you lead back up here, you can see again some more speckles showing up here and there, but they're not all that abundant. You can see the blue stripe again continues to look great as we move through the figure until we reach the hip region, and then it's just gone completely. Don't know why it absolutely is awful that they did that. It really would have looked better if they at least even just ran it like out to here would have been okay, but ending it that soon is just a travesty. As you lead down here into the thigh, you can again see the muscle definition as well as some nice, you know, cracks and crevices in the skin texture of the raptor. You've got the kneecap there in the front, the calf muscle again in the back. All of the detailing looks great there as you lead down into the foot sculpt. Nice scoots down the toes. Very nicely sculpted out nails. No nail paint yet again. You've got dew claws as you would like to see. And then leading back up into the body, you can see more nice detailing leading out here into the tail. Absolutely gorgeous looking skin texture on this figure. And you have a really nice curve in the tail. Very elegant looking curve. And it actually goes into an upward position as far as the curve goes, which I do quite like. Something we haven't really seen too much on previous Velociraptor figures, so I definitely like it here on this Velociraptor Blue. You're not really going to see too much over here that's any different than what we saw on the initial side, except for, of course, the positioning of the legs, and that's kind of like your usual when it comes to a Mattel figure. So as a whole, I would say it's a pretty nice looking sculpt, kind of, like it's not bad. The paint job, though, is definitely the problem on this one. It looks great for the first half of the figure and then quickly becomes almost unpainted for the second half. And then, of course, we needed painted nails, but that's just a given when it comes to almost every Mattel figure. But as a whole, you know, it's a pretty fun Velociraptor blue figure. As far as the articulation goes, you have the articulation in the jaw, really smooth. The neck articulation, which is fantastic on these Velociraptors, I love the neck articulation and just how smooth it is like it moves great no matter where you go with it i wish some of the other figures in the mattel line that had like neck articulation like this worked as smooth as you get on the velociraptors you also have arm articulation forward and back doesn't go out away from the body same deal for the legs forward and back it doesn't move out away from the body and then you have the swivel tail that's really about it when it comes to articulation you do also have the fax app code which you can see right there if you would like to add it to your collection and then again, the Jurassic logo here on the back of the code right there. But that's really about it when it comes to the articulation. And there's no action feature being that it is a ferocious pack figure. So for a length, you are looking at right around the six and three quarter inch range or a little bit over 17 centimeters. And then for a height, the highest point definitely is the tail. You're looking at about four and a quarter inches or 11 centimeters. For a size comparison, there is Mr. Papo T-Rex, the Attack Pack Colovasaurus, and Robert Muldoon from the Mattel Jurassic World toy line next to our Velociraptor Blue. Although I don't think that we really even need to at this point bring in these figures for a comparison because if you have one Velociraptor from Mattel of this size range, you've got them all because they usually always end up in that same similar size range and that is no different with this one, right? there in the same size range as pretty much all of your mainline Mattel Velociraptors. And here is a comparison between the Extreme Damage Velociraptor Blue and this new Ferocious Pack Velociraptor Blue. Now here's one thing that I can take note of right away is look how much better the head and neck sculpt looks on the Velociraptor Blue from the Extreme Damage version compared to this new Ferocious Pack one. I knew there was just something up with that head sculpt that made it look really weird and off. And you can definitely see it now with the Extreme Damage version next to it. The Extreme Damage version is way better than what we see on the Ferocious Pack version. Just a huge difference, I think. I like the pose better. I like the overall body sculpt. The newer one, you know, it didn't really bother me so much until I actually looked at it here now next to the Ferocious Pack version. And it just looks so off when it comes to a Velociraptor Blue figure. You can really just see... A pretty big difference between pretty much every area of this figure it's still you know it's not a bad one at all it's still cool to see a different variation of velociraptor blue but the extreme damage version definitely looks better than the ferocious pack so this brand new ferocious pack velociraptor blue from mattel for jurassic world dominion is okay but very lazy like even when you saw the velociraptor from the extreme damage pack next to this ferocious pack version like the blue stripe running all the way out onto the tail just makes such a huge difference and the lack of that blue stripe running out onto the tail on this one 
instantly takes so much away from the figure. Like, it just looks... Uh, I don't know, really cheap because of that. And then the sculpt overall just isn't really that great. Like, it looks good detail-wise. Like, the fine detail looks fantastic on the Raptor overall, but the appearance just, for some reason, looks weird to me, and I'm not sure what it is exactly. I'm actually having a very hard time picking up exactly on what makes this one look so much weirder than the Extreme Damage version, but... I'm not sure it definitely does though, however I will say again that the fine detail looks nice, just the overall appearance looks a little weird, a little off. The paint application is okay, but just really, really cheap looking. The articulation works nicely, there is no action feature for the figure, no painted nails or anything like that. So as a whole, it's not one of the best Velociraptor blues we've had, in fact it might be the worst, next to like maybe a minifigure or something, it might be the worst Velociraptor blue we've had and uh, definitely not a huge recommendation from me. If you want to complete the line of Ferocious Pack figures, of course you're going to need to buy it, but that's pretty much the only way I'd really recommend heading out to look for this one, is if you really need to complete the set, then I would say pick it up. Otherwise, it's really not that great of a figure, so I will include a link in the description if I can find somewhere that's currently selling it, although... The Ferocious Packs have been a little bit of a mystery when it comes to buying them online. Seems like most times you probably just have to head to purchase them in store at either Target or Walmart. But if I can find a link, I will include it in the description. Otherwise, again, good luck, happy hunting. Hopefully you'll snag this one in store. And make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next review. Thanks for watching.